Hi everyone, I'm Haley. This is Bitter Kitten Crafts. Um, this is a channel where I talk about knitting and crocheting and other fibery stuff and sometimes other art stuff. Um, it's been kind of a really long time since I made a YouTube video. Oh, and this is Boo. Um, she's my little sidekick. And yeah, it's been a really long time. Um, I've been doing a lot of painting and other arts, which I'll talk about at the end, um, but I'm really happy to finally have kind of my knitting mojo back. Um, and I finally finished a couple things, so I'm excited to show them to you. Um, and I'm gonna talk mostly about just what I've been working on in October because um, over the summer, I made like a couple things, but I really didn't finish that much. Um, so it's not really like worth showing, but just as like kind of a refresher of who I am. I live in DC. Um, I'm a nanny. I'm an artist. I knit a lot now, again, thankfully. Um, and I have this sweet cat and yeah. Um, and I really like plants. So if you also like plants, let me know. Um, but yeah, anyways, I wanted to show you guys everything that I finished in October and some stuff I'm working on for November and maybe through, probably through the end of the year. Um, but we can start just quickly with, <laughs> with what I'm wearing. Um, this is the Aquamarlene by Park Williams Park and Knit on Instagram. Um, and this is like a really old pattern that I, or well, the pattern's a couple years old. This is one of my older FOs, um, but it's like one of my favorites. It's super cozy. This yarn is like a Karen Pantone collection yarn. So these are all like Pantone shades, which is kind of cool. Um, and this is like a, an acrylic bamboo wool blend I believe but it's a very heavy bulky weight um and it's like a really cozy sweater and it finally got incredibly cold here in DC um for a couple days so I'm happy to be breaking out the bulky knits um but let's get started with my FOs um, I want to start with my FOs because I'm really excited about them and I'm really proud of them and I hadn't finished something before I finished these things since like June. So these things are both things I started literally like months ago. Um, one of them is from the beginning of the year, one of them is from like June and I haven't started a new sweater until this week since these things. So I'm really happy to have them off my needles and that's why I'm here talking to you guys because um, I finally have stuff to show. <laughs> so this is The Daily Pullover by Paula Pereira. I think you guys can see it. Um, this is a little v-neck fingering weight garment. Um, you can knit it obviously long sleeve or short sleeve. I chose short sleeve because I got this yarn on sale at my local yarn store Looped um, and they only had two skeins left. So this is Junk Yarn. Um, it's in the colorway Crystal Barbie, which obviously everybody's been like loving Barbie stuff. And I cast this on um, to knit it at the Barbie movie. <laughs> here so I completed my goal and then that was literally months ago and I just finished this so this was a long-term project which I mean fingering weight is always long term but that's you know that is what it is the speckles turned out so good I love the neon yellow speckles um, I love how they look in different types of lighting they look more green or more yellow right now they're definitely like really neon looking, which is awesome. Um, and I had this really pretty trim in my stash, which this is um, Muse 2320 in Minnesota. This is their colorway Grasshopper. Um, and I think it was like the perfect complement to these neons. And I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. So this is the size four. Um, I used two, like literally exactly two skeins of this fingering weight and then like 20 grams of this green. So it was like a pretty budget conscious knit, I guess, especially considering that I got this yarn on sale um, from Looped and DuPont Circle, which that's my favorite. That's my local yarn store. Um, I go there for knit night pretty often. Um, it's a really fun time. So if you live in DC, definitely, definitely come. Um, but yeah, so this, I knitted this because I've knitted the Cozy Classic Light um, by Jessie made like a lot of times like I just cast on my seventh one <laughs> so I had a friend who was like look like 
I know you love that pattern, but try something else. Try a different fingering weight tee. This one's a V-neck. Um, this is a Pearl Soho pattern. So um, if you're familiar, Pearl Soho has like a really, really, really great pattern selection. It was super easy to follow and the FO is cute. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. Um, so can't recommend that enough. I wanna get more junk yarn, like really bad because it's so pretty. My next FO is finally finished. So this is something, this is the Shifty by Andrea Mowry. Um, and this is something that I started with a couple friends back in February. We all cast on the Shifty at the same time and one of us finished it like, you know, pretty promptly. Um, and then I, I did so much knitting on this. I knitted the entire body, I knitted one sleeve, and then I left the second sleeve for like um, literally months. Like I started this in February, in March I kind of abandoned it with just the second sleeve left and then I just picked it back up after I finished my tea and I started the second sleeve and honestly I'm kind of embarrassed that I waited that long because it took me like a week, like less than a week to finish the second sleeve. So this is Knit and Spin Cycle. Um, <laughs> hello boo. This is Knit and Spin Cycle, um, but it's Spin Cycle scraps. So I had one full skein of Spin Cycle, which was in Mississippi Marsala. And then all the rest of these are like little bits and bobs that I had. So you can see the color change is like pretty rapid, which isn't always the case with Spin Cycle, but that's because I used scraps. Um, and then this purple yarn, I loved knitting with this purple yarn. This is BC Garn Samia Melange, which I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I'll put it like down here, but I love this yarn. I wanna knit like so many more sweaters in it. It's a non-super wash, heavy fingering weight. It bloomed beautifully. Like the drape is awesome. It's so soft and squishy um, and knitting with it was really, really fun. Hey boo. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I'm really, really happy with this yarn, this purple yarn. Um, so the pattern is originally designed to be knit in all spin cycle, which um, to be very honest is like wildly out of my price range. Um, I was happy to have like the two skeins of it total-ish that I did. Um, and like the one skein and all the scraps because that is um, wildly out of my price range. But this yarn was $10 a skein for a 50 gram skein and I used four. So I felt like that was like definitely an excellent kind of budget friendly choice because I really, really wanted this sweater um, and I wanted a purple one because I love purple. Um, and I have one skein of this purple left and I'm definitely gonna save it to use it for color work and I'm probably gonna invest in another sweater quantity of this yarn because it is so good. It is so good. Um, I'm really, really happy with this. So this is just like some kind of specs. This is the size four. Um, I knitted on size four needles and I added an extra, like you're supposed to stop it and do the ribbing like here but I added an extra repeat of the big and small blips because it was kind of looking a little short. So I added, I think it ended up being like three inches that I added, which I'm happy I did. So definitely would recommend this pattern. Um, it was honestly like a labor of love because the rows go by pretty slow since it's a circular yoke. Like, especially when you get to about here, the rows are huge. I mean, you can see like this all orange is like one, all one row. So definitely a labor of love, but I would recommend it. I think I'm gonna try to knit it again um, in spin cycle. I have like a couple more little balls of scraps. So we'll see how far it gets me, but it would be pretty to do this in like a plain yarn and a speckle too. Um, you don't really need spin cycle as, as beautiful as it is. Like if, you know, you don't need it. But um, this purple is from Fiberspace in Alexandria, which I looked recently because I wanted to get more, um, and it's not in stock there anymore, but it is pretty easy to find because BC Garn is a pretty big brand. Um, so just as an aside, 
but I also did something fun that I really like which is that I bound off in this bin cycle on the bottom and the sleeves and I also cast on in this bin cycle which I think adds like a really nice little contrast so yeah that's my shifty that is my like eight month long project I'm so happy it's finished I'm so happy it's finished okay so I those are both of my FOs um I have like a couple other smaller FOs which I'm gonna show now um none of them are knitting but that doesn't matter so one of them is I guess I'm gonna count them as an FO because they are each they each one takes like two hours and I feel like that counts as an FO even though I'm obviously not finished with like the final product so as you can tell by this blanket behind me, I also crochet. Um, crocheting is more of uh, like a meditative hobby than knitting for me. Knitting, I really like um, making sweaters and making kind of projects that involve counting, etc. You know, crochet is more like I'm watching a movie and it's dark and I can't keep my hands still because I will snack or whatever it is, so I crochet. Um, so I've been also working on this crochet blanket kind of on the side. I have 30 squares done um, out of 64 and each one is will block out to be about a foot hopefully. So this is just like a regular granny square blanket but I'm using all of my self-striping sock yarn held double um, because there was one point in my life where I was like I'm gonna be a sock knitter and that lasted for three and a half pairs of socks and then completely gave up but by that point I had been gifted a lot of self-striping yarn um, from people destashing and stuff so I have plenty to work through I am not I might have extra after this blanket to be honest so I have these are my four October squares um, each square ends up being 50 grams because it's held double so my goal has kind of been to do four squares a month like two skeins of yarn a month um, so these are yeah just my October squares and these are both two different strands of like lion brand um, sockies one is a solid purple and then one is this kind of cool looking pink and green and red self striping but I like that it stripes up kind of differently in each one um, even though they're the exact same size and stuff it's kind of fun so hopefully this will be like an eight foot square blanket similar to this blue one behind me um, and my color scheme as you'll see hopefully I'll be back to making videos you'll see all my squares every month my color scheme is kind of like a neutral and purple type of palette um, it's purple again what can I say but <laughs> I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out and it's been really fun to feel that little sense of satisfaction after like a two hour um, project of each square. So there's four here next month. There'll be four hopefully again, although I'm like distracted by Christmas knitting right now, but yeah, so that's an, a non-knitting FO, whatever you want to call it. So I also um, sometimes do cross stitch, which is like sort of rare. But I finished this cross stitch, which I'm so happy with. So this is a poisonous mushroom. Um, I am not like super knowledgeable on mushrooms, but I think they're awesome. I paint them a lot. And so my motivation for this cross stitch, which is, I think it's like six by six. So it's not huge, but it's on this cool frame, which I really like. Don't look at the back. It's actually very bad. Don't look at it. So my main motivation for making this cross stitch is that I have like a gallery wall. Uh, actually, you can see it back there. And a lot of the things on it were just paintings or drawings or whatever in frames. And I really wanted some variety. So I've added a couple things that aren't um, just like images in frames. Like I have a little mirror. I don't know if you can see it. And I have like a wooden thing. And then I really wanted to add this because... It looks cool and it's not a painting in a frame so it took me like months like from when i moved in i started this and my lease is about to be renewed in february so <laughs> if that tells you anything this was a long-term project but it ended up super cool i'm really happy with how it turned out and i want to make more cross stitch stuff now because i think that it you know it's worth it if it ends up looking this cool 
And if anybody knows anything about this type of mushroom, um, let me know, hi boo. Let me know because I think it looks, it looks awesome and it's apparently quite poisonous, so that's fun. Hello. So I have one more FO um, that is knitted slash crocheted um, and I'll put a picture because I actually sold all of them, which is awesome. I did a market at the beginning of the month and I made, <sighs> I think eight pumpkins, maybe more, a bunch, like a bajillion pumpkins. Um, I knitted like a rectangle or I crocheted a rectangle and then I sewed up the bottom and I sewed up the top and I kind of made like an orb and I stuffed it with stuffing and then I put like a little stem and a little vine and a face. And so I'm gonna put a picture here of my, my pumpkins because they're cute and they were festive and they were like a hit at the market, which was really nice. Um, so I'll show you guys those, but those aren't really something I, I'm not like really an amigurumi girl. I was at one point, but now it's more just kind of, it was just like for the market and now I'm, I'm done with the pumpkins, but they were fun and they turned out cute. You'll see, they turned out cute. Uh, so we can move on to my works in progress for November. So I have a couple things in the works that I really, really recently cast on and I'm excited about them for the first time in a while. I'm like really motivated to finish and I am looking forward to making some Christmas gifts as well. And I don't know about you guys, but every time the weather gets colder, I always end up kind of moving back towards knitting and fiber arts and things that can keep me warm. Um, so I'm really excited for this winter season of knitting. So to start that off, it is, um, it's like the first week of November right now here. So I feel like it is seasonally appropriate, even though uh, it feels really early for Christmas, but I know that with knitting, like it's worth it to start it now because otherwise I probably won't finish it in time for Christmas. So. With that being said, this is my Christmas sweater that I started. So I'm super happy with how it's coming on. Um, I have never knit anything like this overtly Christmas before. And I actually, I'm like really happy with it. I think it's really cute. So this is my seventh Cozy Classic Light by Jessie Made. I've made six of them. Um, a couple of them are tees, some of them are different sizes. One was a gift, you know, you know how it is. Like not all, I don't own seven. I am really happy to own a Christmas one. So this yarn is, I can show you some of it. The pink, which is kind of, I feel like the star of the show. So this is Pink Peppermint by Woolen Vinyl. It's like a pink, obviously, with like green and red speckles. And I got it last year, Christmas 2022, I received it for Christmas. Um, and I didn't really feel like it was a seasonally appropriate thing to be knitting like mid-January because I got it um, like for Christmas last year. So I saved it for this Christmas and I'm so happy I did because I'm using, this is like a random knit picks that was in my stash. Um, and then I have this, oops, boo, 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 boo. Uh-uh. No, 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 boo. Okay. She likes the ends. I mean, obviously like who wouldn't, you know? But I might have to evict her from my lap here. So yeah, this is a green, um, it's from literally Lord knows where. It's been in my stash forever. And then this is like a white sparkly undyed yarn. I'm not sure if the sparkles are reading on camera, um, but I also wanna show my little, my little guy, I'll be like a makeup artist. Um, so this is from Fangirl Fibers and it is Cusco's potion, the potion for Cusco. It's <laughs> my favorite thing ever. Um, but I just got it at the Frederick Fiber Festival. So I wanted to show that off. Boo, you're evicted, boo. So <laughs> that's my Christmas sweater. Um, hopefully the next time you guys see it at the end of November, it'll be finished. But honestly, who's to say? Um, 
<laughs> Honestly, who's to say? I, I'm gonna plan to make it long sleeved. Um, I have one full skein of each color, so I should have enough. Here's a good example of how these speckles are knitting up in the pink. I think it's looking so festive and I'm really happy about that. At first when I cast this on, like Christmas colors are kind of admittedly hideous. So I was like a little bit like worried. So I was really happy when I started the white stripe and the red stripe, I was, I was feeling a lot more confident that this would be cute and not Freddy Krueger-esque. Um, so yeah, so that's my little Christmas sweater. And this is the Cozy Classic Light by Jessie Made um, in size four. Okay, so I have a couple more things to show you and they are um, edits to projects that I previously made or that I was gifted. So one is, this is one of my Cozy Classic Lights um, and I made this to wear to a concert uh, two summers ago, so summer of 2021. I made this to wear to a concert and it ended up really cute. Um, and it was a summer concert, so it was perfect for that, but it's so cropped. I mean, you can even see like in comparison to the cropped sweater I'm wearing, it is so cropped. So I have enough yarn left that I'm gonna plan to rip out the ribbing of this and then knit, you know, this should give me actually three or four more inches, I'm hoping, to just pick up the stitches and knit, keep going, um, and then knit the ribbing back onto it. So what I plan to do is rip this ribbing out, weigh it, knit all through all the way of this until I have however much is left um, the weight of this, and then knit the ribbing again. So yeah, I'm, I'm really, really hoping to add like three or four inches to this tee because it's super cute but it's really only like appropriate for like a concert or something which is fine but i'd like to have it be more versatile in my wardrobe so this yarn is hypothesis yarns um and it is from the knot house which was a yarn store up in frederick and i used to live up there like an hour north of dc they closed and i'm so sad about it they had stunning yarn so this is one of their hand dyed yarns that they had there. Um, and I'd really, really like to make it a more wearable thing. I know that like a lot of us, including myself, struggle to like edit things that are bound off. You know, I blocked this, the ends are all nice and woven in and I've worn it and I wore it um, more than once, but I just feel like it's not serving me the best it could. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit it. That's one of my goals for November. Um, the next project that I am working on editing for November, um, excuse me, Boo is sitting on it. Excuse me, beep beep. Oh, she did not want to be moved. Excuse me, okay. So this is a quilt. <laughs> I do not quilt. I want to learn how to quilt literally so badly. I want to learn how to quilt. Um, I can tell that that's going to be like my next kind of obsession hobby. And so I received this quilt. Um, it has a large hole and I am going to repair it and then I get to keep it. And this is a quilt that I believe is from like the fifties. If anybody knows anything about quilting, I've been searching based on the color of this batting, when this quilt was made, what, what its deal is. It's definitely a scrap quilt and it's definitely a scrap quilt from somebody who was like thriftier in nature because this is corduroy like pants material there's some denim in here um this is hand quilted too i'm not sure how well it's reading on the camera but it's hand quilted it's like machine um bound and sewn together oh no it's machine sewn together but then the binding is hand stitched and the quilting is hand stitched so i've been like hemming and hawing about this at first, I found a fabric from my little fabric stash that was like a pretty similar color. It was like a blue swirly situation. And I was like, oh, like nobody will ever know that I repaired it. And then I found this sloth square in my stash. And I kind of thought about it and I was like, wow, like it would be so fun to repair it with something that is more me and more, uh, I guess, like modern. And it will be kind of like, it will kind of blend in, you know, but it won't, it won't be like crazy, but it will be notably different and it will be kind of mine. And so I really thought, oh, I should repair it 
with the sloths. So let me know like if you feel like you think I'd be like ruining the integrity of the quilt or you have an idea on how I can go about it, let me know below. Basically this one patch for some reason, it feels like it's like really, really thin, um, like that baby blanket type of cotton. Um, and it just maybe didn't kind of stand the test of time. The rest of the squares stood more of the test of time. And this one just did not, which is sad, but it's, you know, repairable. So I have this little panel and I was thinking I would just kind of mimic the hand quilting and literally just like stitch it on top of the hole. Um, but we'll see kind of how that goes. We'll find out together how it goes. Um, and like I said, if you know anything about quilting, like, please help me. <laughs> I tried to post on Reddit about it. Nobody responded. Um, like, any help is appreciated. Um, but I think it'll be a fun little afternoon project one day to, to just kind of stitch this on. So I'm really happy to have received this heirloom. I feel really, really lucky um, to own this quilt. But... I have one more thing. I, I've shown a lot of stuff. I have been gone for a long time, so sorry if this video is too long. But I got these skeins from the Frederick Fiber Festival. So these skeins are from 29 Bridges Studio, which is a relatively local dyer to me. They're in Maryland somewhere. And they're also at like all of these events that I go to. They have booths at like a bunch of different places. So I see them a lot and I love their beautiful colors. Um, and these are actually seconds. It says like, I'm special because I have a splash of red. Um, I haven't found a splash of red really on any of them um but i really like the colors so i'm planning to make the holiday slipover which i'll put a picture here of uh i've made one of them before and it's so cute and it's really really um cozy and warm because it's bulky and so i want to make a second one hopefully we'll see to wear to thanksgiving um like i might not finish it and that's okay but i also have so I need 400 grams and I have 300 grams of this color, which like I said, it doesn't have a name. Um, and then I have one skein from my friend, the Scranton Stitcher. She dyes the most beautiful colors. Her yarn is some of my favorite yarn to knit with. This is Electric Love by her and look at the neon. Oh my God, it's so good. So I actually frogged a hat to be able to include this in my stripes. So I think what I'm gonna do is stripe this with this and then an undyed skein of bulky that I have. So I'll make my yarded. And like I said, I really hope to wear this to Thanksgiving. Um, we'll find out together if I'm able to. The last holiday slipover that I knit, I finished it in I think like five or six days. So I should be able to finish this. We'll see, we'll find out. Um, either way, you'll see at the end of November when I film my next video. So I also have been participating in like a bunch of art shows and art events um, in October. And it was really, really fun to have my art displayed in a gallery down in Richmond. Um, so I'll put a picture here of the art that I submitted for that show. So I participated in two art shows in October and I'm really happy and proud about that. So yeah, hopefully that will continue in the new year and in December. So with that, um, take care everybody. Thanks so much for watching and thanks for hopefully welcoming me back to YouTube because I know it's been a long time. Um, so have a great day. <laughs>